Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to this quarter session of Home Buyer 101, where we will give you a 360 view of things you can expect if you're looking to buy a home, some differences to um, take note of when you come in from a renting to a home ownership situation, different tips and topics on how to plan, prepare, keep up with this new lifestyle, insurance, management, all of those things that we may not think of while we're still renting. Or if you're preparing to start the home ownership process, this session is for you as well. On my screen or on your screen, on our screen, you will see none other than Mr. Sebastian Washington. And then later on joining us will be Ms. Kat Drayton. All right, so take notes. We will have the Q&A box available. If you have questions, drop them in the Q&A, or you can just simply share them in the comment section. And we will periodically throughout the course check in to be able to answer those questions. All right, no question is a bad question. If it pops in your head, ask it. Somebody else is probably thinking the same thing. Get your notebooks, get your pens, Let's get started. Hey, Sebastian, how are you doing this evening? Doing good, Ebony. I do. I do. I see you and I hear you loud and clear. All right. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, thank you yourself for inviting me here today to this, to this forum. I want to thank Increasing Hope uh, for being such a uh, an outstanding uh, partner with me as we uh, try to get folks uh, into these homes out here today in the Charleston area. Um, I think this subject matter is so important. It's just a one-on-one -on -one of home ownership. Um, just, to, just, you know, just from a ground, ground level, um, folks are probably renting or uh, experiencing uh, increases in rent, um, watching the news every day, just hearing all the different things that are going on about home ownership and really want to find out about what to do. So um, I put together a little, uh, a little slide uh, slide segment just to kind of walk us through it, walk us through Perfect. it, walk us through it from a one-on-one standpoint. Uh, so let's see if I can get that rolling for us real quick, okay? Absolutely, sounds great. All right. So you guys, uh, you guys see my see my slide? I do. We see that. All right. All right. Well, first of all, just want to introduce myself to anyone that does not know me. My name is Sebastian Washington. My friends lovingly call me Bash. Um, and I am a, uh, a native of the Charleston area. I've been here my entire life. I, uh, I think that's been one of the greatest assets that I have since entering into this uh, industry that I've literally lived or been a part or have family in just, to, just about every part of the Charleston and surrounding areas. So um, I think that's, that's very beneficial when it comes to realtors. And a lot of you probably have realtors, uh, not have realtors, but know of realtors. Just to give you a sense, there's probably over 7,000 realtors in the, uh, in the Charleston and surrounding areas. There's probably more um, real, real estate agents that, that there are homes available in the Charleston area. So there are a lot of individuals that, that you may know other than myself, and now you know me, that might be able to help you with the process. And that to me is probably the first place where I would start. Um, just finding a, a, a real estate agent that you know um, that can shoot you straight and kind of help you along uh, along the way. Um, my first slide here is why rent when you can buy a home. Uh, Ebony, Ebony I'll, I, I just want to mention the fact that today the way the uh, the rental uh, the rental market is structured, some folks are paying the equivalent of what they could be paying in a mortgage. Um, but the fact is, they're not really sure, well, is a mortgage something for me? Um, how long should I rent? Or, you know, how, you know, how, how do I not pay this rent and um, become a homeowner? Uh, and what I say to that is just the top of the slide here. It's just kind of time to get serious because you can do this. 
Um, if you're looking at your rental situation today and you're seeing the price of rent rise or you're, you're, you're somewhere where you may not want to be at this present time, it's, it's very, very possible for you to move from a rental situation to a buying situation. It's not, not at all a problem. Um, well, Sebastian, quick question for you. So sure. something that myself and some of my friends have found a little frustrating and it was really interesting you made that point. It's, it can be a little confusing when we can afford to pay, you know, $1,300, $1,400, $1,500 in rent, but then we're told we cannot afford a $900, $1,011 $1 mortgage. Like, how, you know, what do we do with that? So if I'm sustaining this crazy amount of rent number, but then I'm being told, well, I'm sorry, we can't help you to, you know, be able to purchase. Well, there, uh, uh, that's a very good question. That's a that's 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 an excellent question. And one of the one of the things that really just kind of pops into my mind is when you when you say that your scenario might not be the same as someone else's scenario. Right. Um, their 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 income level, their debt levels, uh, the things that they have going on in their households might not be exactly what you you have going on in your household. So all those all those different factors come into play when that quote unquote number comes uh, across and says, well, you can you can only afford to to uh, uh, this amount of home. So so that's that's a that's I mean it's it's almost one of the most important things to begin to understand. Everyone has to know that their situation is uniquely different from everyone else's situation. You can even bounce, just like I mentioned, from being from different areas. You can bounce across from county to county. Um, the numbers might be different. There might be different tax levels or insurance levels um, that you may pay in one county that you may not pay in another county. So, so each individual scenario is going to be just a little bit different when it comes to that. Um, but what I say to that is pro probably on the next slide here. Um, Let's skip, skip ahead. Um, and getting pre-approved, um, knowing it's half the battle. Uh, sometimes when we're, uh, I've been a renter too, um, not to pick on the renters because uh, it, it, it actually serves a, uh, a purpose, but you don't know, you just don't know. Um, you really need to begin to sit down with the lender and find out what it, what, what, do I need to do first of all to become approved or pre-approved, and it'll help gauge what that number is. Because um, one of the one of the uh, important factors here, especially becoming a homeowner, is knowing just how much house you can afford. Um, you know, there's just a truth to it um, that 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 individuals have to figure out how much how much home I can afford. And that again is going to be uniquely different for every every individual. Um, but the most important thing to do is to try to get pre-approved because knowing is half the battle. Um, you know, just like you were saying a little earlier, well, my friends, you know, their situations are probably a little uniquely different than yours. Um, but I will, what I will say is, um, it's. It's just sort of like, uh, I wanna kind of put this as simple as possible. Um, when it comes to wanting to own a home, the most important thing to do is to begin to, to understand, like we were saying on the first slide, is to make, that, to make that commitment within yourself to say that this is something that I wanna do for myself or for me and my family. Once you make that commitment, you're gonna have, excuse me, you're gonna have a team of people they're going to be working for you on your behalf to get you from making that decision to getting those keys in your hand. Um, and the only difference in everybody is, is just the, the amount of time it's going to take. And that's still all going to be relative to each, each unique uh, individual themselves. Um, but again, a lot of times, you know, you, you, you ask yourself, I said, you know, I, I, I say to myself, I, I noticed that there's there's just a different pride level um, when it comes to ownership than rentership sometimes. Um, there's, just, there's just a lot more at stake. Um, we all understand that owning home, 
owning a home or or home ownership is a pivotal key in building generational wealth and potentially setting up legacies for different for, for you and your family. So that's that's really critical and really important. Um, it's just not going to happen through through rent. It just it's just something that just won't happen. Um, that is awesome. Another question that popped up. How important, especially when we're looking at like the pre-approval process or, you know, as you were stating a few moments ago, in preparation to buy a home, how important is your selection and your relationship and your transparency with your realtor? So, you know, maybe they are not ready to purchase a home right now. Is it too early? Say maybe they're six months, a year out. Is there a magic number where you should reach out and you know start to build those relationships? How important is that process? Yeah, I, I, that to me is probably uh, you, you phrase that you, you phrase that perfectly. And I go to the top of the screen. You or anyone else know, has to know when it's time to get serious about what you're doing. Um, um, transparency, um, is, is, gosh, it's, it's, it's so important. I wanted, I wanted to read, I want to read something to you. Okay. Um, as you, as anyone thinks about beginning the process, I would, I would ask you to find a realtor. I would ask you to, 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 uh, find a realtor because once you, have a realtor, you you move from being what we in the industry call a customer to a client. And here's what we here's what realtors uh, we we uh, we take an oath to do. We take an oath to give you client level duties such as obedience, loyalty, to disclosure, confidentiality, very important, confidentiality, accounting and reasonable skill and care. We're gonna have your back 100%. And what helps is just to be honest about whatever the situation is. Um, someone might come to me, well, they, well, folks come to me all the time and probably uh, most realtors do and they, they say, hey, Sebastian, I, I, I'm really thinking about buying a house. At that moment, when that thought is hatched, that's when it's time to that's when it's time to rock and roll. That's when it's time to you know sit down and say, hey, listen, we need to make, we need to perhaps sign this agency, agency agreement and move you from one from one step to the next step because it's a step by step process. That commitment is probably going to be the most important um, step that they'll ever take um, um, because what's going to happen is Someone is, some lender or some mortgage company is about to lend you hundreds and thousands of dollars, potentially hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars for you to purchase a home. They're going to comb through your financial records top to bottom. If there's something that comes up, it's going to come up. It's, it's just one of those things that is going to come up. So it's important to kind of get all of those um, skeletons, if you will, out of the closet. And trust me. Everyone has them. Everyone has them. And to each person, it's uniquely different. Um, and I want to also just, just kind of key in on something that typically happens in that beginning phase of that beginning process. There's always a reason why someone may, may or may not have committed to moving forward with the home buying process. One of the number one things that we run into is potential credit issues. You know, um, life happens to a lot of us. I got my hand up. Matter of fact, I've got, got, I've got both hands up. Um, things happen. I mean, let's just be real. Things, things just happen. Um, you know, the line says, is my credit where it needs to be? You know, it may not be where it needs to be. That is not the end all be all. Because I'll give you an example of what happens in this industry. And it happened to me today. Client, great credit no income problems, but I can't get them to submit the documents that need to be submitted on time. 
you know, so don't, you know, just, just understand, you know, every, everyone has their, their, their thing, but I would never want anyone to, to not want to move forward with making the next step because they, they believe their situation is worse than what it may be. Um, never feel that way because it is what it is. It just, it just is. <laughs> um, um, you know, some of the, some of the things that we've got here in this list, we're, you know, we're, where do I want to live? Um, you know, cho choosing where to live sometimes can be an economic decision. You know, one county over another county, a school district over another school district, parents, yes, even, even pets. <laughs> you know, um, HOA fees. Yes, yes. There, there's so many different things that can kind of dictate, you know, how you move along in the process. But I would never want anyone to to say, hey, well, listen, I, um, I'm really thinking about it, but the only, reason, the only reason why you won't be able to move forward is if you don't get some professionals behind your back, people that can support you, because we're on this call, the organization, Increasing Hope, it's just, it's just another example of uh, uh, an entity that's there to help you, to support you, to guide you. You may need to just kind of tighten up your budget for a few months. You know, um, and I'll raise my hand again. There's there's nothing better than seeing your simple savings go from 100 to 300 or from 300 to 500. There is nothing in the world like seeing your money grow. Um, and uh, that's another thing, I, not to kind of bounce back and forth, but just to kind of make a, um, a comment to something that jumps out to me. It's. It's sometimes not necessarily always about the money, you know, like one of the questions I hear, have here is like, do I need a down payment? Um, that's another scenario that's going to be uniquely different for each individual. But what I'm really trying to say is sometimes it's more of a mental thing than it is a financial thing. Because if this home is something that you want, there's probably some things along the line we can kind of we can kind of put to the side for a moment in order for you to, to gain a little financial traction in order to move forward with accomplishing this goal. Um, but I say all I have to say: never let things like um, um, a potential credit issue or uh, not really realizing that, you know, not really having or feeling like you have the appropriate amount of savings in order to move forward with, a, excuse me, with a home purchase. Um, and I do, if you, if you don't mind, I want to touch on the down payment um, scenario, if I could for a minute. Yes, uh, and we have a couple, we have a couple questions too. So yes, absolutely. Okay, right. So, so there are, just to say this, just to say this, each individual out there may qualify for a uniquely different type of loan. We'll start off there. Each type of loan may say, hey, I need this percentage of money from you down or this percentage of you of money from you down. What they're asking you to do is put a little skin in the game. Okay? I think that that, you know, sometimes uh Anything worthwhile, someone wants to see you put a little skin in your game. So a catch to that is, not even a catch to that is, there are organizations out here or loans out here that can help provide you even with that amount of money. I mean, it's there. But you just, you have to begin, you know, you can't ask for it. You're not even, you know, if you haven't really uh, begun to start the process. Um, but again, it's just one of those things that where uh, there's a stereotype to say, hey, I need, you know, it used to be 20% down or 10% down in order to purchase a home. Um, typically nowadays, certain loans will, will do the federal, federal housing loan, for instance, they're going to, they want to require a three and a half percent down payment um, to purchase a home, just to give you an example. Um, but there are entities out here that can help provide you with that three and a half percent down um, as a means. And here's something I want my potential first time home buyers to know. It's just not you <laughs> that are, are asking for this money. Everyone's trying to find this cash. I mean, it's just, 
It's just the truth to it is we're all watching the news, Evan. We're all watching the news. We're all watching what's going on. We're seeing, we're seeing the prices of these homes rise. Everyone's looking for a little bit of cash. It's out there. Okay? It's out there. Um, and I'll give you a little, you know, insider information here. It's not really insider information. It's just, it's just kind of what we deal with. Uh, contracts today look different than they, they looked last year, you know? Um, when you're presenting offers, contracts today look completely different. That's why it's just so important that you 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 start as soon as you can. When you if you if you believe you can, you pick up the phone and call me. I believe you can too. Again, it's more so here than it is in the back pocket, and that's just the truth. Um, you know, I was uh, you know. Every house you walk into isn't going to have hardwoods and granite countertops. Let's just face it, okay? There's just a truth to it, you know. You know, you you know, we're we're in this HG, HGTV realm of how things are, you know, how things look and how things go. Let's, it's it's not as seen on TV, okay? Um, things take. So they're not time. all turnkeys, is what you're trying to tell. Ah, come on, and you don't just. I've got. I I have clients right now. We're probably on our eighth, ninth offer that we've submitted, and we've probably seen fifteen houses. It's just a realism of what's going on. Um, patience is important as we, you know, as you begin to move forward, and that has nothing to do with the individuals. It's just the state of the market right now. It's just why it's really important for anyone that's really even considering this, start now. Start now. Absolutely. Two, two things. Um, one, we have a question, and this might be coming up in your presentation, or um, you know, when Kat comes on, I do want to acknowledge her presence really quick. She's in the background rooting. Um, so she's definitely here. Um, but one of the questions that came up is, does age play a factor to the lender? So is it something different for maybe like a 22-year-old as opposed to maybe a 50, 60, 70-year-old? I, I would say no. I would say no. I think, um, I think for, the, for the most part, what any lender is trying to do is try to show some form or sense of stability um, to the applicant. Um, you know, in most cases, the more, m most important thing is going to be your consistently consistency, your income. You know, I'm working with a client right now, um, that is, uh, getting a, getting his income through his social security benefits, you know, not necessarily a W-2, you know, um, so it, it doesn't necessarily matter how the income is coming in, but it's just, is it going to be coming in consistent, consistently? And let me tell you something about that, that younger age of the spectrum. I love it. I love to see people in their 20s talking about home ownership. Why not? You know, we're uh, we're in a society right now where uh, there's a there's a generation of people. They talk they talk we're talking about the millennials um, for the most part, or not exactly sure what they're there's another name for them now. But uh, they're 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 estimating to be 1.7 million 1.7 million millennials that can a afford a home and b don't know they can you know that they can afford a home, okay? We're, we're in a generation where we've become a work from home um, type of community now. So your location necessarily doesn't matter. Um, we used to be like, well, I live here. So uh, um, maybe this market isn't the market that I wanna live in. Um, but nowadays, young people can. Um, there's a... Uh, there's also a group of people that have been collectively buying together. Um, you know, that is something that each individual has to do for themselves or the, the type of decisions that they have to make for themselves. But um, 
say you can't afford a house on your own, but you can with a roommate, you know, not necessarily a roommate from, from, from that perspective, but maybe an investment partner where you guys are partnering with the mortgage and having and, and having the opportunity to gain or, or, or grow equity for yourself um, at a later date. Um, all doable, all doable. Another thing that we see nowadays that I'm experiencing is uh, maybe a, uh, a parent and a child doing mortgages together. Again, every, every scenario is gonna be uniquely different for each individual, but at the same time, making the situation very possible um, uh, in, a, in a scenario where you might be able to grow, grow equity for yourself. So long way of answering the question, not necessarily age doesn't matter. My, my mother was in her late fifties when she purchased her house. Okay. Wow. Um, now we're talking about an asset. Um, she's, 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 uh, uh, close to, uh, 80 now. And it's an asset that is going to be passed down, um, to one of the grandchildren. Um, so go for it. If you're a senior out there, uh, <laughs> or, uh, 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 a person of experience <laughs> by all means, uh, begin to uh, potentially create something for yourself as well as for your family for the long run. I, uh, I'm 100% behind it, and I, I don't think it's a black mark for any lender out there. Perfect. I actually know a group of teachers, four teachers, purchased a home together, and when they explained it to me afterwards, I was like, that was brilliant because they have this property. It's a wonderful property. It's an asset. They're building equity. And they're able to teach and live, you know, while they're gaining their seniority and learning and skills. And they're able to do a lot more because it's not just falling on one individual. It's extremely affordable and they caught a really great deal. So, you know, I think I'm, one of the things I love about what we do here at Increasing Hope and, you know, having you and Kat involved is starting the conversation. Having the conversation, whether it's the first time they hear it or maybe the fifth time someone hears it, you know, something that you and Kat both preach a lot is that courage to call. You know, sometimes the fear of admitting that you want to do something different. Maybe your family are just a family of renters. There's, we're not saying there's anything wrong with that, but sometimes that fear of doing something different can halt you. Pick up the phone anyway. Send them an email anyway to say, hey, I'm not real sure. And I think that's something that you guys left out of your realtor creed is there are days where you encourage us more than we believe that we can. Yeah. You know, it's like, no, you can do this. Keep saving. Keep going. You know, keep growing. Keep those hopes and those dreams alive. And there's been times where I picked up the phone. And I'm like, I don't think I can do this. Like, this is way too hard for a single mama who's at school i can't and my realtor she'll get me together she's like all right now go have a snack and call me back because this is you know this is your goal and you're showing your children or your cousins or you know maybe your parents if they're not homeowners that is something that can be attained um so how does fear and i'll throw this to you and kat how does fear play a role in the home buying process. Is it normal? Like, am I just a little bit weird for being afraid? Um, you know, is it okay to be scared? How does how does fear play a part in this process? Yeah. Hey Kat, Kat, I uh I want to say one thing and I'll let you I'll let you chime in. Um I got on the screen screen. It's always it always seems impossible until it's done. I am a living testimony my my home buying experience i uh i i'm married i have a wife i'm ready she's not ready uh uh i don't want these people in my business uh uh uh, uh you know we gotta still work on you know it's 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 the fair is real um, and it's understandable, you know. Uh, one of the things that I I, uh, I I hear about is that the 30 year mortgage, you know, it's just sort of like uh, it's just this big fear about that. Um, but there's 
there's so much more to to that. Um, but I I'll be honest with you, Ebony. Once you get started and you get rolling, your confidence just grows and grows and grows and grows. But it you have to you have to begin, um, and that's why these forums are so important. Um, just so you can you know find yourself speaking to some you know someone you trust, even trusted professionals versus your cousin or your sister or your brother-in-law or someone like that. You've got trusted people, you know that you know that are legally bound to 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 be of service to you and want to see you succeed. Um, but yes, the fear the fear is real. But it always seems impossible until it's done. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't think anyone has done anything bold and courageous absent from fear. You know, it's that I'm going to call anyway. I am going to send that text message anyway. Like, I remember when I was first asked, what are you looking for? I had this grand thing and I sent it. And then I was like, but, you know, if that's not possible, and she was like, nope, stop, we're, we're not starting that conversation. If this is what you're looking for, you know, be flexible, but don't you dare, you know, squash that dream. You know, even if it's maybe it's not your forever home, we got right. we need to get you started. There's something that we advocate at Increasing Hope. There's always hope. There is not a situation that is hopeless as long as you're willing to work. You know, and that honesty piece with your realtor is also super important, you know, because what I've learned along the process is, well, maybe we need to move you from this place to this place so you can save more money. Maybe we need to get you connected with someone who can start working on that credit and help you budget and help, you know, so your realtor, I cannot say this enough, your realtor and your honesty and your willingness to, you know, really build that relationship is so important. You know, there are some people who are ready to go and buy tomorrow, you know, but if you're not, don't be discouraged. There, there is hope. There is a home and there is that, that those resources that are available. Ms. Yes. Kat, how do you feel about this? I feel encouraged. <laughs> I was like, go ahead, Ebony, go ahead, go ahead, say it, yes, girl, yeah. <laughs> I feel so encouraged. I, I feel like, I feel like I can sell ten houses right now. <laughs> yes, I love, it. I love it. Um, I, I would say, uh, you and Bash are one thousand percent correct. Uh, the fear is real. It's it's fear of the unknown, you know, can you get there, etc. But to combat that, I tell my first time home buyers, we take it one day at a time and we take it together. You're not alone through this process and even after. I still have clients that will call me because they're like, "Okay, it's tax time. What do I need to do?" You know, those types of things. It's not um and I know bash. So I know with us, it's not like a one and done. You're not, uh, you know, you sell the house and then you don't hear from us anymore. That's not the case. You're still going to hear from us. You're, we're going to check in with you and make sure that you're okay. But for me uh, to add to that, it's the transparency. So I think that you and bash both touched on that. The more you tell me, the better the entire transaction will go. I know what pace to set you at. I know how much to tell you, what I need to hold back, what's gonna scare you away, et cetera. So the more communication and transparency you give to your realtor, whether it's myself or Bash or, or someone else, we do appreciate that. Also, you want that trust. You know, you, it's it's a big transaction. Uh, you know, most most home purchases are a big transaction, whether it's your first time, whether it's an investment, whether it's your second home, you're downsizing, it's still a major purchase for you. And you need to feel comfortable with, you know, who you're working with. Um, you need to be able to trust that person. That, for me, will lessen the fear. Because at least I know Bash has me, you know, I, I know that I can pick up the phone and call Bash and say, 
oh my gosh, so like something's happening, right? And what, what do I do in this case? You know, that it, it just, it means so much. So if it's not myself and it's not Bash, I would say definitely have conversations with your realtor and make sure that you're the right fit. Um, now today, I, I'm so blessed. I, I come across the clients that are like-minded like me and I'm a faith-based realtor. So for us, we, we apply that faith towards it. You know, I'm like, is this your house? You better claim it. You know, we're, we're faith-based up in here. So <laughs> we claim it. <laughs> if Noelle was here, she'd tell you to, we claim it. We claim it. <laughs> so, you know, there's all those things that play into it. But it's really, for me, it's the transparency, the communication, and, and the relationship. Um, my father would say, if you're afraid of it, you need to do it. You need to prove to yourself that you can do it. You don't allow fear to ever hinder what you want. You don't, you don't allow that. And I know we're talking about home buyer, but if I can encourage anyone, you push through that fear because you, you can do it. You just need the resources to do it. You know, I, I can talk all day. I'm so passionate. Y'all got me all, I'm all like, <laughs> Let's help everybody. Everybody, you get a house. You get a house. You get a house. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Not only with your realtor, with the lender. Um, I'll just give a brief personal example. I was working with a realtor previously and just submitting the application and the documents, it was the feedback was so overwhelming and, and a bit negative until like, I was just like, okay, I can't do this. Um, but what I did not do was pick back up the phone and, you know, further that conversation with the realtor. I just went, you know what? I don't think this is for me. Um, but, you know, that can be a different experience. So don't even, I would encourage anyone not to even let that hinder you. Right. Talk right. about it with your realtor. Yeah. Um, you know, and the lender, when I restarted the process again, was so kind and echoed a lot of what my realtor had already said, you know, do X, Y, and Z. And if you do this, and if you do not add any other thing to this, then, you know, keeping on this trajectory by this date, you'll be great. Um, you know, so it's, it's a collective, it's a collective, but the more your realtor knows, um, of course, the better the experience. Another question that popped up with, uh, with the market as it is right now, which is a seller's market, how soon should you start looking if you are in a rental lease? Uh, yesterday. Um, <laughs> yesterday. Um, I have some clients that I'm helping right now. We are hitting the pavement hard because they're leasing in uh, the end of August. It's easier for me to actually get you pre-approved now, believe it or not, than to find you the house that you would like. I'm not the type of realtor, I'm not just gonna throw you into your house. Um, I believe in buyer's remorse, just like when you buy a car and the car, that new smell goes away after three months. The same can happen with the house. So, and and also you're competing with other buyers. Um, as it stands, I'm quite sure Bash touched on it. It's a seller's market right now. So for one, for every one house, you probably have about 10 other people looking at that same house with you and as aggressively looking with you as well. I would say at least try to have a conversation with your realtor um, three to six months before your lease is up. I, in some circumstances, even a year. Um, you know, if you if you you already have the mindset that you're wanting to purchase a house when your lease is up, um, definitely start the sooner the better. You don't want to wait last minute because that creates anxiety and a lot more stress. That uh, Bash will tell you we can alleviate if you have the conversation with us sooner rather than later. Um, also, especially if you don't know what's going on with your financials, maybe credit, maybe there may be some things that we need to touch and tinker with a little bit. So that will give your lender 
time, that'll give you time, et cetera. And, and I, you touched on it, Ebony, it just makes the transaction and the process a lot more smoother if you were to start and have a conversation. Um, myself and I, I mean, Bash and I were in the same uh, brokerage at one point and we were taught about buyer consultations. So we tend to have those before you even start the process of looking for a house. Um, and I still have those today. So for, for me, I would say definitely don't wait till you're about three months before your lease ends. Um, I, I work miracles, <laughs> but it's not frequent, uh, but I can work stuff. I've been known to work a miracle too, but I can't promise I can work the miracle for everybody. Um, but I'll pass the mic to Bash so he can answer. <laughs> Am I good? Yes. So... Thank you, Kat, because that's, that's just the real of yesterday is, was the perfect answer. So let me just kind of throw some heady stuff at you, at you guys today. Why would you, why would you not want to start now? The, 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 the current economic climate that we're in right now, I mean, I have to be careful how I word this, but it really is something that hasn't been seen before. The, 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 the dynamics and where we are in terms of uh, how they are, the lending, um, the, uh, the interest rates on today's dollar, um, it's, it's, it's just phenomenal. You, you would want to get yourself in a strong, in, in this financial position now. Everything is leading to increase, 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 increase. So we, uh, we, we were at a forum today just kind of talking about the sellers. You had mentioned the seller's market, for instance. Well, the sellers are going to be uh, in a position here as a, as a, think about it this way. If they wait to sell their home, they're going to be paying more as well. So the longer you the longer you wait, the more you're going to end up paying. Um, equity is growing at a phenomenal rate. Why would you not want to take part in this if it's possible? The only way is the possible is to get in the game. It's just it's, it's, it it is what it is. When the window begins to close a little bit. There's going to be opportunity. There's always going to be opportunity. But why not touch base with your real estate professionals, touch, touch base with your nonprofit groups, get the consultations that you need to get so you can move forward now. Every day, uh, what is it? What is, there's a saying, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, deciding not to decide is a decision. You know, <laughs> deciding not to move forward is a decision. So decide to move forward. If anyone's on this call today that hasn't reached out to anyone, you should do it today. Honestly, you should do it today. It will cost you. <laughs> so uh, that's just my uh, my little nugget uh, on when. Um, Kat, you hit it on the head yesterday. <laughs> it helps if I unmute. Sorry. <laughs> perfect segue into another part of the conversation, what to expect. So I, you know, I'm on this journey or I've got the keys to my shiny new house and my faucet is leaking. When I was in an apartment, I called the office, they sent someone over, I didn't have to pay for it out of pocket, I have to mow grass now, you know, my kid, it, what, how do we prepare for that part of the process? Because maybe it's not the financial lag. Maybe it's, you know, not the, the credit score. Maybe it's just the fear, and we, we can call it that, of all of these extra expenses. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, don't even have renter's insurance. So now I have to buy a house, I have to pay the mortgage, and I have to have insurance for that. And I have to call out pest control and I have to. So how can we, how can we address that? That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm being, I'm trying to show etiquette. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, 
what I normally do is I push to make sure that my client has a home warranty. So when you purchase a home, you, your realtor, I mean, Bash and I are the bomb, can't, you know, hey, 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 you know, we make sure that our clients are uh, prepared, um, you know, it's the home warranty, normally the one that we provide uh, will cover you from top to bottom. So plumbing, electricity, or electrical work, roof, like big ticket items, we tend to um, have a warranty take care of that. Now with the leaky faucet and stuff like that, you now would call your handyman instead of calling the landlord. <laughs> So now you have a handyman and if you're not cutting your, your own grass, you're going to get a landscaper and all that. You have your realtor there to provide you with those resources. Um, normally when we close on a house, uh, we provide them with that information um, just depending on, you know, the condition of the house. Now, if it's new construction, new construction has their own protocols and procedures to walk you through those things. If there are just little cosmetic issues and stuff like that, um, you know, they have their own procedures and we would go over that there. But if it's a previously owned home, you do have the home warranty um, as an option. And then your, your realtor more than likely has some connections to direct you to that right person that's gonna help you, more than likely. Um, and I always say, you know, get some quotes. Don't be afraid. It's, it's an easy fix. Nine times out of 10, you either use your warranty, you have homeowners insurance. There are things that are put into place to protect you as a homeowner. So you don't necessarily have to fear that. The only difference is you're not calling your landlord, you're calling someone else, but you're still going to call somebody. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's, that's real good, Kat. And um, you, you mentioned or you touched on something a little earlier just about being transparent excuse, to the client. Uh, homeownership is a responsibility. Um, you know, you do pay your rent, but all that cost is added in to your rent, you know. Um, but but owning, owning, owning a home is a responsibility. Um, each agent or each realtor should take the take the time to advise each client and like Kat was saying earlier we listen throughout this throughout this process we're listening maybe I do have a uh, uh, um, a hands-on do-it-yourself type of client maybe I don't you know maybe I have a, a single mom um, maybe we have to go back to the beginning and understand how we're structuring your budget and the the, the, uh, the amount of home that you can um, they say the average maintenance cost is about 1% um, per year. Um, so so uh, even Ms. Dorothea, I never forget Ms. Dorothea early on, um, just talked about having that little fun because life will happen. Um, so when things do happen, it's not this um, five alarm fire that's going off, um, but you, you've positioned yourself, you've had these discussions, you, you kind of understand um, that this is a this is a financial investment and things things because things will happen you know things will happen um, but just understand too that on the flip side of that 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 is why that is why when you do become a homeowner versus a, a renter this is now an investment and there's an opportunity um, to grow in equity because you have this investment but it just will require the responsibility to the responsibility that every homeowner has to take. And I'll, I'll say this one thing too, there is so much pride in learning how to do something because every homeowner, no matter how much you know, learning how to do something, oh man, you, you really have a sense of pride in doing, doing something. I am not wearing my YouTube, um, YouTube uh, patch university, uni YouTube University patch today, but it's amazing the way the world is structured today. There's a lot of things that you can do yourself. Um, you know, you, we're just mentioning YouTube, but even the way that, that social media is now, there, there are tons of people that know how to do things that are more than willing to help you get those things done. Um, but very good point to bring up because home maintenance is very important, very important. Um, but it's a doable situation.
Now, to, <laughs> to add to what Bash was saying, that home maintenance will come into play if you decide later on that you want to sell your home or if you want to rent it. Um, I love that you said that, Bash, because I, I don't know how many we have on that are actively looking for a home, but you can definitely tell the difference between someone that took care of their home and someone that just lived in it. And I tell you what, it makes a difference as far as the price point, the amount of offers and the type of offers, the type of feedback that you're going to get into the house. So thank you, Bash, for saying that. That maintenance is, is very important, um, especially, you know, if, if you were to get a starter home and then about five years later, you want to go ahead and upgrade, get a larger home. You want to have taken care of your first home because, again, it's an investment. And if you're looking to make some kind, some some you know income from that investment you want to take care of your investment you definitely do yeah awesome next question where do you go for assistance whether it's down payment assistance um is it important to of course consult your realtor but is it important to also have banking relationships with like real banks and you know, maybe through that relationship, be able to qualify for funds. Um, say you do qualify for funds from that bank. Um, are there other agencies that may be able to help out? Like, is it like coupon? Can you like stack some of those funds to be able to cover it and maybe even have a little extra to, you know, buy that lawn set for your new home? How does that work? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll lead a little bit on, on that one because uh, I, I, I always get this question and it's, I wouldn't say it's a difficult question to answer, um, but it's an important conversation to have with anyone looking to um, um, receive down payment assistance. Um, nothing's going to be, nothing is for free. Okay. They're going to be able, there, there are, there are several um, lenders, if you will, will that can provide what they call 100% financing programs um, you know sometimes when you when you when we when we say 100 percent someone else is going to be kicking in that little additional percentage that you may need and they're going to be there potentially may be a little uh, a few charges associated with that but it's very possible so that's why it's important for each individual to have a conversation like this with their lender you know before you try to get the three and a half or the five, you got to get the 96. Um, so, so once you get the 96, you understand, okay, well, maybe I, maybe I still need assistance. There are several state agencies out here that can provide that type of assistance for you. Um, some of them, some of these agencies, it's just um, a, uh, a course or a class that you may have to take in order to receive access to these type of funds. Um, you know, I don't want to get into naming um, organizations or facilities or lenders or things like that, but just know that there are options, but each option is going to be uniquely different for each individual. And I'm sure Kat can um, um, agree with me that it's also, it's also going to be important from, for your realtor to know too, because let's just give the hypothetical and say, you decide to accept uh, some of these funds, whether they be they come in the form of a grant, some of them come in the form of second mortgages, you know, some of them, some of them come in the form of for forgivable loans. Um, all that's going to uh, affect the way we uh, are presenting your offers and your contracts in today's market. Um, so some of those things are important. Um, and I'll give you a horror story. I hate it. I hate the horror story. Um, but, you know, just, I would, I, I don't want to say it's a horror story, but, um, you just, be, you just have to be really careful. Okay. Um, the funds are there. If you need them, they're there for you to access them, but you don't want to pigeonhole yourself because of those funds. Um, because there's more than one way to access them, you know? Um, so just, just be mindful of that. You know, just like the little uh, Muppet that comes on TV, he says all the time, oh, I'm just sitting here in my pajamas and I'm um, shopping for a loan for you. I can get you this. 
can get you that. Just be mindful. That's why you've got to have a good, strong team. You've got to have a solid realtor um, and a good lender to help guide you and figure out what's going to be best for you. Okay? And that's kind of a little... <laughs> so no just going out and just finding stuff and accepting it and then be like, hey, I have $7,500. Let's go. Is that what you're saying? Are you... Yeah. Well, 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 what I'm saying is the funds are there and they're available for you. Um, you take the necessary steps. You know, if you're, if you're the person that needs these funds, if you really need these funds, they're there for you. And don't hesitate to go ask for them, okay? Um, but they do, they're, they're all uniquely different. Like I say, some come in the form of second mortgages, some come in the form of forgivable loans, and some may come in the form of grants. So you just have to sit down and research to figure out which scenario is going to be best for you. Um, but they, they, they are available. But the, the, the key point is uh, they're there for you. They're, they are there for you. So that should just remove that thought process as, as this is my stumbling block for, from entering the market, you know? Um, so don't let that be a hindrance for you. Um, I would... You know, if it were me, I would, you know, I would first of all uh, try to try to look at an individual's personal situation and then try to try my best to match them up with a good lender. Um, every lender is going to have uniquely different programs or portfolios of things that they can offer. And knowing different lenders and knowing what they offer helps to make that match happen for you. Um, so that's why it's always good to talk to a realtor um, because the network connection and the, the professional relationships can help you um, save a lot of time uh, and headache too. Hey, Abby. Yes. Hey, Peter. Peter's hey, part Kat. of our team. Kat, how are you? Passionate. Hi, Peter. I'm good. How are you? We're behaving or we're trying to. I have a very simple question. And I think we, we haven't talked about it yet tonight. What is PITI, P-I-T-I? -I? Can you say it one more time a little bit slower? What is PITI, P-I-T-I? -I? And, and what does that mean in terms of underwriting a loan? Uh, your principal, your interest, your taxes, and your insurance. That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something as a homeowner you need to face right in front of you. <laughs> yes, yes. So... It, it is something that you definitely want to take into account. Um, all of those factor into your monthly mortgage payment. Um, funny enough, you should mention that because I just had a scenario with a wonderful couple. Uh, we were looking to make an offer on the house and I just happened to mention to them, I said, is this within your budget? Because there are some circumstances where you can be approved for $300,000, but can you really handle that payment and still live as comfortably as you want to? So lo and behold, they call the lender. The lender tells them how much their monthly payment is going to be, and it was way above what they wanted. So we had to pull it back down. As a realtor, my practice just because you're approved for $300,000 does not necessarily mean we need to go all the way to $300,000. You want to still live within your means. You want to still be able to afford that. Um, normally with loan programs, they will include the insurance and the taxes in with that payment. So it's not just the interest that you're paying on the principal of the house. You also have to take into account how much your insurance is going to be and how much your taxes are going to be. You're charged yearly for those items, but they are divided up monthly into your mortgage payment. So very important. Thank you, Peter, for saying that. And, and I, I know Bash and I feel the same way. We want you to feel comfortable. Uh, my aunt would say something like, don't put your hat so far up that your hand can't reach it. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's it's true, and I, I live by that principle to this day. And now my thing is, I don't want you moving in and you eating ramen 
because you can't afford your house. I want you to be able to buy a steak occasionally if you feel like it. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question, Peter. <laughs> well, it does. Uh, and it's important. And that's why I bring it up because one of the first things at the agency we do when you sit with a client is we, we work through their budget and you'll be amazed. Mm -hmm. The question I ask as a housing counselor at the agency is, do you operate a household budget? I would say the answer to that is probably nine out of 10 people do not. They don't. I no. repeat, do not. And that's the first thing we have to co cover so we can actually find out what you can afford, so. I love it. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, it's, it's true. Definitely wanna know how much house you can afford and where you're gonna be comfortable with those payments. Definitely. And even um, the HOA, right, Bash? Now, some lenders, they add the HOA fee into your monthly mortgage payment. So you, you have to take that into account as well. All, every HOA uh, organization, they don't always charge you separate. Sometimes they add that into the mortgage. So that that is something that your realtor and you would need to discuss with your lender to make sure. Can I ask another question? I'm not trying to hog the mic here, but <laughs> it, it's just something we haven't talked about. Uh, and I'll, I'll let Bash handle this one. Um, tell me about the role of the, the appraiser in the situation. And what about the role of the home inspector? Can you cover those two? Yeah, no, um, uh, no problem, uh, <laughs> Peter. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going through a process right now uh, with a home appraiser and a home inspection. Um, so we talked a little bit about the uh, pre-approval pre of the, uh, the client for the mortgage. Well, in essence, the appraisal is sort of like the pre-approval for the home. Um, every home, every, every lender is going to send their appraiser out to appraise this property. And what they typically do, they take, they take comparable houses in the area to establish a median price for that particular property, the appraisal. Now that each home is going to have to meet the appraisals, the appraiser or the, the mortgage lenders standards in order for them to give the, the property its appropriate appraisal. Um, um, we have, um, we're experiencing, like we were just speaking today, uh, the market right now, we're experiencing a uh, shortage of appraisers in the area. Um, and so, so sometimes these appraisals come back like you want them to come back, you know, with an appropriate pricing for the property, um, but sometimes they don't. Um, but the appraisal is a, uh, and also that's typically a cost that the buyer will have to pay. It's one of these kind of quote unquote, uh, hidden charges, so to speak. It's, it's probably uh, sometimes going to be an um, upfront charge um, uh, for a buyer. So uh, if anyone's out there um, thinking about some of these quote unquote hidden fees, uh, an appraisal cost might be one of them. Typically, as some of them run um, anywhere from three to $500 sometimes. Um, and to go into the home, inspect, home inspection, uh, the home inspection is a uh, uh, something that we just 100%, I know I do, and I'm sure Chad does, we, we, uh, we tell each buyer to invest in having a home inspection done on the property. And what the home inspector is, he's going to be a part of your team too. So what he's going to do is he's going to comb through that house in every nook and cranny, under the, uh, under the crawl spaces, into the attic. He's going to be outside. He's going to be on the roof on a ladder. He's going to be looking at the condition of the property to say to themselves, okay, um, I'm going to create this list. And it's a very detailed list um, illustrated with every item that he finds that may be a potential issue for the potential homeowner. Um, and again, this is one of these costs that a buyer um, needs to prepare for. Um, they run anywhere from uh, two to four hundred dollars for for a home inspection. Um, the home inspection price is going to be derived on things like the location of the property, where it's located, the size of the property. Is it a one-story property? Is it a two-story property? Is it elevated or is it on a crawl space? 
So all those things um, are part of um, uh, um, the buyer's due diligence, as we put it, um, to uh, have the property um, looked at before they make their decision upon purchasing the property. Quick question, should you seek out a home appraisal on a new build? Like it's brand new, what could be wrong with it? Uh, <laughs> so the way the way the new construction market is now it's it's so unique they're 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 just kind of a unique animal in themselves um as far as new construction is concerned so it's really hard to say it's it's, it's kind of going to be one of those things that the homeowner themselves um um would have to make that decision on it i um i i don't necessarily know if i would uh recommend the appraisal but what i i do suggest though is you know even though these new construction builders have their own team going through and they they're going to show you hey this is the framing hey the electrical work is due i still do advise to have at home your own personal home inspector to to be representing you because they represent the builder I would still recommend having a home inspector with you during the building process to go side by side with their inspector as that prop, as that home is being built. That is that's something that I I would highly recommend doing. Um, but if, but as far as appraisals, um, I think that would be uh, something that I would uh, leave up to 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 an individual to make that. So appraisal. that's so that's different. So a home appraisal and a home inspection is not the same. Don't yeah, they look the, at the same stuff? Yeah, the, the appraisal is trying to assess the value of the property. Okay. Um, versus the inspection, it's trying to assess the condition of the property. That's good to know. That was a question. <laughs> hey, I have one more. I'm filled with questions. <laughs> Go ahead, Peter. There's alphabet soup out there, I call it. There's FHAs and there's VAs and there's USDAs and, and just what is all that? Again, remember, we're talking to people who are maybe like I was confused when I first got my first home. I, I didn't understand all this stuff. Can you go through the alphabet soup? One of you? The alphabet soup. <laughs> So <laughs> those are uh, loan programs that uh, you have options to utilize depending on your personal uh, financial situation. And uh, Bash and Ebony, they did a great job. They, they touched on that um, as far as like age, you know, whether you're uh, younger, like in your 20s or, you know, your early 20s or 50s or late 70s, et cetera, et cetera. So depending on the program and depending on your financial situation would depend on which loan type you can utilize. Um, An FHA loan generally is reserved for first time home buyers um, and frequently used, I must say. Uh, in today's market, though, I have seen for my part, my clients, there's been an upsurge of conventional um, buyers that I've been working with now. I think that uh, buyers today are realizing that the conventional loan just offers more bargaining power as far as it relates to the seller. And I say that, and I, I believe Bash, um, I do apologize for coming on late Bash, but I, I believe he touched on um, skin in the game. That's what he said. He said it was skin in the game. Uh, so with the conventional loan, you would put down a, a larger down payment. Um, so in essence, you're willing to put more down in hopes to purchase this home. Um, so going back, the FHA, you would have to put down a 3.5%, whereas a conventional loan uh, generally starts with about 5%, depending. There are some 100% financing programs. One is a conventional one that I do know of, and then there's USDA. 
Uh, USDA first time home buyers can utilize that as well if they choose to. Uh, those loans or loan programs are 100% programs. However, you would look to purchase your property in more of a rural area, um, somewhere like um, Bash can help me, like the upwards of Monk's Corner, uh, Ridgeville, Jedburgh Cross, places like that where they're still developing. Um, and then you also mentioned a VA. A VA is for our wonderful veterans that have helped us and uh, those programs are reserved for them. Um, I have had um, some of my clients be able to utilize that even though they're retired, you can still utilize that program. Um, and that is also a 100% financing program. Um, BASH can add to that. Uh, with the VA and an FHA, there's a little bit more going on with that process because they are government funded homes. Um, so your realtor will definitely inform you to, based on your financial situation, which direction to go along with the help of your lender. Um, because you can always, there are situations where my clients are actually approved for more than one loan type. And what we do is we choose the best one that suits them and their financial needs. Yeah. Bash, do you want to add some to that? Yeah. I know I can't cover everything. <laughs> it's, it's kind of outside the realm, but inside the realm too. But Peter, it's a, it's a great question. And it, and it does kind of present itself as an alphabet soup of sorts, like you mentioned. Um, and Kat, you did a great job with that too. Um, um, the, uh, the loans, each type of loan is going to be insured by a different entity. So your government loans, uh, the, these are loans that are going to be backed by the, by the government, federal government, uh, federal housing authority, FHA, um, the USDA loans. And all these loans are, are, are backed by the government. So the, the government is going to take a certain risk level, um, for these clients. So sometimes you, you hear them say, well, the FHA or the government backed loans, they want a certain percentage of money down versus like Kat says, now you see a movement now, um, especially in to, especially with the asterisk and especially in today's market, this movement to go toward what, what, what you might hear called a conventional loan. And these, these are gonna offer the buyers just a little bit more flexibility not only the buyers, but the sellers in terms of what they are going to require um, from everyone involved. Um, and then the same thing about the USD, USDA. Uh, those loans are, uh, are, are set up to try to drive uh, home ownership in some of your more rural areas. So again, I go back to the conversation about there are programs out there for anyone um, but you just have to get started. Um, just to kind of uh, piggyback on the USDA, uh, um, and Kat mentioned about uh, some of the uh, conventional programs, there are 100% financing programs available. I mean, they're available. Um, and Peter, that was a long way of answering your question about it's all really going to depend on each individual client. You know, so when they're sitting down with you and they're structuring themselves and, you know, like Cass said, well, maybe they can qualify for one or two of these different type of mortgages, but they won't know unless they, uh, unless they get, in, uh, get involved with the home buying process to, to, to initiate this type of conversation. And that really goes back to the most important part, you know, um, just, get, just, getting, just getting in the game. Quick. I I think that leads perfectly into our next question and possibly maybe our last question. Um, what can you say to those folks who have high student loans? Does that knock me out of the ballpark for being able to purchase a home? Is there something that I can do? Are there programs? Is there hope? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead real quick and just to, yeah. just to say, um, student loans are an issue. Um, and I, uh, I pride myself on being, uh, being uh, straightforward and, um, and honest and forthcoming. Um, 
it's not so much of an issue that it can't be addressed, but it is the issue of our time today, um, the student loans. Um, there are ways that, that lenders are able to structure student loans, um, but it's just one of those things that you have to you have to look at. Everyone's scenario is going to be different. I had one that I had a little trouble with last year because uh, she had student loans. She's still actively a student as well. Um, so there was some programs that she couldn't take advantage of. Um, I have heard that there, they have through the years been working toward um, kind of modifying how the student loan um, is approached in terms of showing uh, um, your, your payments. Um, so some, of, some, some folks are currently paying on their student loans and sometimes that may reflect on their, uh, what they call their debt to income ratio. Um, but there are ways lenders can um, kind of navigate through that process. So it's not the end all be all. It's just a scenario that ha you have to sit down with and, and navigate. Um, but again, don't let that don't let that fear um, stop you. Because, um, like I said, you know there, there there are ways that lenders are working through this right now. Um, you know, document documentation that you can get provided that will help you um, alleviate that, as well as you know there there are things that you know there's chatter about uh, continued modification on how the student loans are being currently addressed. I want to say there's there may be something in, with the uh, floating through Congress right now. I won't mention Congress anymore tonight, but uh, <laughs> but there are there are there is conversation to try to help address this issue because this group is the new driving force of this this economy. So um, um, don't be afraid, but just just reach out. So Kat, you unmuted. Did you want to add anything? Oh, no, I, I loved okay. everything that Bash said. Um, yes, every scenario is different. Um, and to add to it, lastly, do not do not base your friend's scenario on yours. Every scenario is different. Allow us the opportunity to get you in touch with a financial individual. I mean, even I refer people to Increasing Hope, but Kim and Peter are wonderful. Every scenario that you don't take the first no, that's what I would leave you with. One no is not like Bash said, the end all be all. There are ways, there are people that we have helped two years they've been doing stuff, but they are homeowners and they are so happy. So never, never accept no, especially in what me and Bash do. We don't know the word no. We, we don't, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to try to give an overview or a synopsis and oh, freebie alert. For those of you that are on the line, the presentation um, that we have been talking through, but you may not see on your screen, will be coming to your inboxes. So stay on the lookout for that. So those um, helpful reminders or, you know, if you think of a question, you'll be able to go back and re uh, reference it. Or if not, we also have the information for our two facilitators, Sebastian and Kat, on this evening. Um, but just to kind of try to put a pretty bow on it, right? So we know, one, it's never too early or never too early to start uh, to reach out to your realtor, right? So to build that relationship, let them know the details, the 411, the nitty gritty, like I have $40,000 in credit card debt or, hey, you know, I have some money saved, but I don't know what I'm doing. Like there is not a question I'm pretty sure that they have not heard. Um, so, you know, that honesty, that transparency, that sense of urgency, um, I also heard you say respond. So if we're asking you to provide some documentation, it's not just because they're being nosy. They really need it or the lender is asking for it. So, you know, that response time, you know, don't keep that fear to yourself. If you're feeling some kind of way, as we millennials say, then share that with your realtor, because I'll tell you one thing, that is some of the best encouragement and accountability that you can have on your side. Um, also, that fear that we talked about with transitioning from rentalship, I think is what Sebastian said, um, into home ownership, 
you know, talk about those fears as well because nine times out of ten, they got a hookup. They have a number or a list that they can provide you for that lawn care, that landscaping, for that plumbing, for that electrical, for that paint if your four-year-old takes the crayons and colors all over the walls. Like, don't panic. They will help you. Um, also, I didn't know, or maybe I did that even after you sign on that dotted line, you can still call your realtor. You can still ask them questions. How do I pay my taxes? What is this? What is this paper that I received in the mail? You know, so that relationship doesn't end the moment you sign your name on the dotted line. They're kind of like fairy godparents. Like they're around if you need them. Um, and they have the, the wisdom and the knowledge and the education, and the certification, and the credibility to help you with this, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand dollar investment, right? Um, also, you know, it's there's no, it's, it's not hopeless as long as you're willing to work. That was something that you both kept reiterating throughout the night. If credit is an issue, shameless plug, increasing hope is here to help. We are certified credit counselor. So we're not just telling you, bring me your checkbook and we're going to look at it and we're going to write down a few numbers. Like, no, you know, we are willing to walk with you through that process um, and help you to communicate with your realtor. Like, hey, I don't have a budget. No shame. We have some resources for that um, to help you in that process. So, you, you know, you don't even have to feel like you're being a burden to your realtor because they are there to help you Sebastian read their creed, you know, they are there to help you. So again, as Kat said, you're not alone. You do not have to take this road alone. You just have to put your hand in their hand and walk it together. Um, I was checking to see if there's anything else that came through. We talked a little bit about lending. We talked a little bit about, you know, that budget or the spending plan, uh, the process, um, you know, student loans. Um, I think we covered a good bit of ground for tonight's class. Is there any last thought or a aha moment or any encouragement that you can provide to our audience on tonight? I, I think, Ebony, you did a fantastic job. Um, We've been saying the same thing, call us, give us a chance, an opportunity to help you. It's called increasing hope. <laughs> there is hope. There's, there's, for me, there's no such thing as no. Um, starting out in real estate, thank God I've been in it for seven years now, but starting out, you know, there's always that fear. We, we have fear years starting out bash and I uh, this is what we do for a living but you overcome those hurdles those barriers and uh, you know you learn from those and you you learn with every scenario every situation is different so again uh, an aha moment that I that I hope everyone listening, do not base your situation on your neighbor's situation. Your situation is completely different. Don't already give yourself a no when you don't know. You don't know. I may turn around and give you a yes. You just never know. So do not base your situation or your scenario on your neighbor. Go ahead, pick up the phone and call call someone that you trust, someone from Increasing Hope. I'm sure myself, Bash, we would love to have a conversation with you, love to help you, um, or just a realtor that you know. Just call somebody that you trust and, and don't take no for an answer. That's that's what I'm leaving you with, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get an amen for that one. <laughs> um, and I'll leave with these, this. Uh, my personal belief that there are, just, there are two things that you need to become a homeowner, and they're not credit and a down payment. They are discipline and consistency. I believe that we live in one of the greatest cities in the country, and I want to I want to see more people take a stake in that. Um, the opportunity is there, the help is there, so. Why not begin to take part in one of the one of the pure wealth building 
um, facts, which is real estate, and to begin to create a legacy for your family. Why not? Why would you not? Phone call. That's really all it is. We have the, uh, the, the network, the resources for you, for anyone to be able to take advantage of. It just, it just requires a, a starting point. And again, like I said, discipline and consistency wins hands down. All right. That is perfect. Don't count yourself out. Don't compare yourself. Don't take no as a finality. You know, be disciplined and that consistency. And I think those are just four really great principles for life. You can use that for the home ownership process, you know, for life in general, for business. I think those are four amazing principles to end on. Um, I, I think it's also very amazing from, you know, increasing hope, being a faith based agency and also learning more about other faith-based agencies you know so even if you do get a little discouraged it's okay to talk about it um one of the things that we offer here at dfree as i bring up our closing slide you know to help with that process um is the course we call dfree and it's literally about getting debt free and it sets you up to be able to take those next steps whether it's home ownership or it's just legacy building period. So I, I think those are, again, four great principles to end on. I am going to put up uh, Kat and Sebastian's information here on the screen as soon as it cooperates. There we go. Um, oh, maybe not. So here, I can, I think my face is covering it. I apologize. Let's move this over. So our next course, so, you know, maybe tonight you came and you heard something and you have your list of things to do. And before you go to sleep tonight, you are going to reach out to Sebastian or Kat or whomever your realtor is of choice. And you can let them know, hey, I heard some things. I'm ready to take that first step. Or, you know, hey, I've learned some things for myself and I know someone, a friend, a family member, or maybe you just need a refresher. We are going to be offering this course again on November the 16th. So save the date. In blue to my top right, you will see Sebastian's email address as well as Kat's. And um, if there are no other questions, I am going to let you go. We are a few minutes over, but I definitely think it was well worth the wait and the time investment. Thank you again so much for tuning in to Home Buyer 101. If this is your first um, session this year with us, please visit increasinghope.org, fill out that intake sheet, and stay in touch. All right, good night.